Hey everybody, Krilk here. Welcome back to a new episode of Let's Play Quantum Break. We're approaching the end of the game. There are still some missions to play, but uh, I wanted to start this episode here uh, with the listening of some of these uh, diaries because uh, most of the plots have uh, finished here. Beth has died, as you all know, and Will has died. And here, if we check, there's only one left to, to unlock, and for Paul Zarin, there's also one. No, no, two are left. So, let's first listen to the diaries of William. Okay, let's listen to the second diary entry, the same day, 2010. Okay, and now the diary entry of a younger William from 2099. Okay, the date is... Uh, the date is... It's, it's February 28th, 1999. William Joyce. Alright, after months of arduous work, my machine is finally ready for human testing. Ready is defined by me, since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black hole's mass density by tangent. Okay, in short summary, I built a time machine, and it works. I'm gonna prove it, or die. Okay, just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel clockwise Around the corridor. Okay. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. I'll travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit 
the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. Corridor is locked in place. Okay, setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive. But I can't travel backwards in time only as far as the first activation of the machine's core, which is, well, now. Okay. Machine's ready. Monitor is stable. What I'm about to do is going to change the very fabric of Okay, yeah, this is uh, this is the moment when uh, Beth and Paul Zerine arrived in 1999. Okay, let's uh, have a look at the next diary. April the 2nd, 1999. April 2nd, 1999. It's been about a month since the incident. Since I was shot by the man from the future. Since Wilder. I've moved the machine. Hidden it. I wish I could destroy it, but... Uh, I made it tell me as little as possible. The more you know about what will happen, the worse it'll be. We're all puppets. I can take that for as long as I can't tell the difference. I think she understood. It doesn't matter anyway. She told me the fracture is gonna happen because of what I did. It's... I have to fix it. I have to. I don't know how yet. I have to I have to build a countermeasure of some kind. I know the theoretical mechanism of the field's collapse, but how to stop it, let alone reverse it. It'll take years of research. I have no idea how to do this. How to pay for it. I don't know. Wilder is from the future. And she came to me. I have to assume that I was successful, right? Why else would she come to me? And he was successful. So let's now listen to the diaries of Beth. October 9th, 0400 hours. Monarch operation moves into the university in 15 minutes. <sighs> this is it. Years of training all leading up to this moment. Just need to keep my cover just a little bit longer. Monarch's objective is to apprehend Jack and William Joyce. Alive, if possible. If what she told me is true, then this operation is gonna end in a shitstorm. It's up to me to make sure Jack gets out of this thing in one piece, but I can't risk blowing my cover just yet. The notebook didn't give me any orders regarding William. Still not sure how Jack is the key to all of this if William is the one with all the answers. We're about to find out. Okay. It's time to do this. Beth Wilder, signing off. And the second diary. The same day, 2016. October 9th. William Burke fucked the rescue operation. Put him on the trail of the lifeboat to buy some time, make sure he didn't find out what I'm really up to. Oh, Jack's gone. Disappeared while I had a goddamn gun to my head. Tried to contact him, but he's out for blood. Dealing with goddamn amateurs. This isn't how this was supposed to go. She never told me the fracture would start at the university. I could have stopped it, avoided all of this. 
Why didn't she warn me? She knew that this would happen. Why the hell didn't she warn me? Okay, and the third diary entry, also October the 9th. October 9th, 1900 hours. We found it. The second time machine. It's the final proof I needed. Everything she wrote in that notebook came true. I found the final piece of the puzzle. The countermeasure that William built to stop a fracture in time went missing in 2010. It was never seen again. It's clear what that means. It was us who took it. It just hasn't happened yet. We go to the past, get the countermeasure, come back, and we can stop all of this in the present. That's our mission. Even if Jack doesn't know it yet. He's convinced we can go back and simply undo this all. He lit right up when he saw that machine, like time travel is some kind of goddamn magic eraser. He's gonna be in bad shape when he realizes the truth. Maybe even worse than I was. Poor bastard. <laughs> Guy's stubborn as hell. Did I mention his ingenious plan to kidnap Dr. Amaral? Let's just say he's in handcuffs right now, waiting for me to Trojan horse his ass out of a high-security monarch facility. He's got balls. I'll give him that much. Maybe I'll wait a bit longer. Make him sweat a bit. No, it was not us who took it. The time, uh, this uh, countermeasure device, it was Paul Zareen. Okay, okay, the fourth entry, October 10th. We've got Dr. Amaral. If she can fix this machine, then this is it. I have mixed feelings. That notebook gave me some kind of sense of invulnerability. I always knew what came next. Once I enter that machine, from that point forward, this story's unwritten. I haven't told Jack this, but I have found things in this swimming pool. Scattered papers, journal entries in my handwriting, they're... My journey from this point forward isn't gonna be easy. That much is clear. As long as we succeed, it's all worth it. This can't be for nothing. We will succeed. We have to. It's our destiny. No, your journey won't be easy, Beth. Unfortunately not. Okay. Now the fifth entry from February 28th, uh, 1999. February 28th, 1999. 2100 hours. He got away. Serene is gone. When Amaral sent me through the machine, I thought I'd come out on the other end with a solution in sight. I found the opposite. The end of time. I saw it. I... I don't know what that means. Ever since I was eight years old, I saw proof that things happen for a reason, that they can't be changed, that I had a purpose. I... don't know what to believe now. If what I saw was real, then anything we do to stop it... will fail. If that's true, then... What is this all for? What does it mean? I can't give up. I'm gonna complete the cycle. Find a solution. There's still hope. I have to believe that. Yes, we have to believe that. Okay, now July 4th, 2010, the sixth entry. July 4th, 2010. I've spent years in denial about what I saw, about its inevitability, the end of time. I wanted to believe maybe Jack was right. Maybe all this could be undone, erased. I looked for proof, a loophole, something. 
Jack's parents died in a car crash. 1999. I thought, maybe if I could stop it from ever happening, if that were possible, then... I failed. I failed every time. Every time I tried to make things right. This is our destiny. The good and the bad, intrinsically tied to this path. It can't be bent. It can't be broken. No matter whether we succeed or fail, it still comes. I see it every night in my dreams, scraping away at my mind. The end of time is coming. And the only way I've been able to keep sane is by focusing on the present. What's here? Now, in front of me. But today, today is different. My whole life, I've had a mission. I'm gonna see it through. Even if there's no hope. Even if we fail. This is what I was meant to do. And I know what happens next. This will be my final entry. Yes, the final entry, and Beth died some hours later that day. Okay, now let's uh, listen to the entries of Jack Joyce. From November 11th, 2016. How close were you with Serene before the experiment? He'd been looking out for me ever since we were kids. When my parents passed away, Paul's family made sure I got back on my feet. You know, Will wasn't around much. I never did have a tendency to make things easy for myself. <laughs> Guess I dragged Paul into my mess. We spent a lot of time looking for trouble. We found it. He got out, I didn't. You said you owed him one. He saw the path I was on, where I'd end up if I stayed. He got me out of the country, told me to never look back. Until now, I never did. Yeah, you know, we were close. Yeah, these seem to be the the interrogation mm, protocols, and as we see, um, yeah, maybe we will be successful because here is a uh, one month in between October 9th and and here we have got November 11th. Maybe a little bit of a spoiler. Maybe we succeed. Let's see, let's see. But let's listen to the other diaries first. Your brother was hired as head advisor on Project Promenade. Given William's concerns with the project, why do you think he accepted the position? He knew he had to get on the inside if he was going to put a stop to it. I've got a better question for you. Why did Monarch secretly push to get my brother hired if they knew he was a threat? You wanted him there. Why? That is simply untrue. Monarch invested heavily in the university experiment. It made sense to offer our own Cronin researcher, Dr. Kim, as the lead developer on the project. Kim's death was a tragedy for us all. But when he passed, we- Don't play games with me. <laughs> Excuse me? But you forget that I know things I didn't back then. I know what really happened to Dr. Kim. What exactly are you inferring? You want me to tell the truth? Then it goes both ways. We also know what happened to Dr. Kim. Okay. Diary number three. You rescued Amy Ferrero at the Ground Zero operation. We know that she downloaded classified Monarch documents. Documents regarding our plans. The CFR, the lifeboat protocol. We believe you're in possession of these stolen files. Monarch framed me. Made the entire city believe I was a terrorist to cover up their tracks. I figured the world might want to know the truth. 
You never released the documents to the public. Well, depending on how this conversation goes, that could always change. <laughs> don't make me grumpy. Yeah, don't make us grumpy. So, diary number four. You said you'd been to William's workshop before. What brought you there? He sold our family home to finish building the countermeasure. He never told me. When I found out, I was furious. I hadn't talked to the guy for almost three years. He stopped answering the phone. I figured he was deep into drugs, gambling, something bad. Did you discover the truth? I never gave him the chance. I found him outside that workshop and tore right into him. Blamed him for everything that went wrong between us. I could see in his eyes he wanted to tell me, but I wouldn't let him. It was the last straw, you know? If I'd handled the situation a bit better... Let's move on to the next question. Okay, the fifth diary entry. Meeting Paul Zarin in the cell. You gave yourself up at the party. Clearly your presence had an impact on Seren. He dropped everything to see you in that cell. Now why do you think that was? He wanted me to understand. Why he did what he did, what he was trying to do. He wanted to recruit you. Maybe he should have thought of that before killing my brother. Maybe. Okay, now the second time machine and checks plan. Diary number six. Your behavior shifted during your mission to kidnap Dr. Amaral. You became less foolhardy, more calculated. What changed? I found hope. The second time machine? You actually thought you could go back and stop the fracture from ever occurring? Stop everything? There was a chance. That was enough. Yet every sign you've seen has proven otherwise. Your own brother posited that time works as a rigid closed loop. No interaction with the past could possibly change what has already occurred, and any attempt to do so would merely cause such events to occur in the exact manner they always did. Perhaps there was a lesson to be learned. My brother died trying to save this world. You know the last words that came out of his mouth? I'll never stop trying. Lesson learned. Okay, and now the seventh diary entry, Serene's condition and treatments. Let's talk about Serene's condition. You're aware of how it started? Uh-huh, ground zero. Monarch developed a treatment to curb his symptoms. Our reports state that you destroyed those treatments, rendering him defenseless as his sickness spread. That's what the reports say, yeah. But I've never stepped foot in that lab. You have no way of proving that. Now, I find it curious. Dr. Amaral was working on a permanent cure for Paul's condition. But she was ordered to stop before research was complete. Sounds like somebody on the inside didn't want him to get better. Sounds like you have an interest in this cure. It makes me wonder if you know anybody else suffering from the same symptoms. It makes me wonder if that is why you're truly here. Or maybe I just really like the coffee here. Yeah, good question. Good question. Okay, now the diaries of Paul Zarin. Here's one more left. We will unlock it later in the game. Okay. PR, on our PR choice. Oh, maybe these are the diaries depending on our choices in the, in the junctions. So let's listen to that. I ordered Martin Hatch to execute his PR campaign. The university mission was a success, but at a great cost. I can't afford unwanted attention. Not yet. We need to cover our tracks. Shift the blame. Jack's transport never arrived at the Ground Zero operation. Martin wants to use the media as a tool to find him. Turn the city against him. I know where I'll see him again. The visions have made that clear. Seeing Jack at the university, it awakened something in me. An admonition of what was coming. A reminder of how it all started. Who I once was. Seventeen years ago, I performed a test that caused a fracture in time. I was to blame. I came to terms with that very quickly. It took far longer to accept that there was nothing I could do to stop it. 
I built Monarch from the shadows. Waited 17 years for that moment to arrive again. Thought I was ready. This was my greatest struggle to date. Feeling the moment approaching, simply allowing such a tragedy to occur, knowing any action I would take to prevent it would simply make it so. And now it's here. We are the only ones prepared for what comes next. My plan was in motion. The time for hiding is over. Okay, and the end of time. This is a diary entry from an unknown point in time on Serene's thoughts about being trapped at the end of time. So let's listen. Okay, finally. Found a stutterproof pocket. This should work. I... I don't think anybody will ever hear this. But I need to record it. If only for my own sanity. I don't have long until they find me again. The end of time is here. I'm living it, living the goddamn proof. How did it come to this? Where did it all start? I conducted an experiment with Jack Joyce. I didn't listen. I was a goddamn fool. We caused a fracture in time. I entered the machine, was sent to the future. But where I ended up, there was no future. Time has stopped forever. I've spent weeks hiding from those things. They're always searching for me and I'm not alone. Someone else is here hunting me. I see her shadow. The machine is broken. I can't make it work. I have to find a way back. Before this ever happened, find a way to... to prevent the mistakes we made. This was my fault. It's my fucking fault! I have to make it right. I have to find a way. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, uh, the person who was hunting him was, uh, him was uh, Beth. This is what we know already. And uh, yeah, this is not just my opinion, but I think he brought a third person or species with him to 1999 and this was Martin Hatch. Martin Hatch, in my opinion, is actually a drifter. And I'm not so sure if he's really dead. In the, in the film sequence of the last episode he died. Hmm. Let's see if he really died, or if, uh, ah, I think he's not really a human. Because he told about our new world, and, uh, yeah, when the world for the human ends, uh, whose world might start, and this is the world of the Drifters. Okay, Paul Zarin's third diary, uh, from October the 10th, uh, 2016 on our personal decision in the junction. I know what they'll say. I've turned my back on Monarch, on the mission. For him, for Jack. The contrary is true. Jack could be our greatest asset if I can just make him understand. He needs time to understand, to process what has happened. Eventually, he'll see. He's the only one who possesses the same power, the lens to see clearly what I see every moment of every day, what's coming, the inevitability of it all. I just received word that shots were fired as Hatch delivered his speech. Shots meant from me. There's somebody else opposing me. Somebody on the inside. The sickness is spreading. Visions are becoming more frequent. I'm having increasing difficulty holding on to the present. They need me to be strong. The lifeboat depends on it. I hope to God Dr. Amaral finds a more permanent solution soon. The treatments won't last much longer. Oh. 
Okay, now the fourth diary entry from 1999. And yeah, this is about building Monarch. September 5th, 1999. Again. I found a way back from the end of time through a second machine. I went back as far as it would send me. February 28th, 1999, with a simple goal. To use my knowledge of the past to protect us from the future I witnessed. I've built a company from the ground up, invested in sure bets. We've made millions in mere weeks. And this is just the beginning. I can use this knowledge to do great things. I can use it to guide us to a better future, to make the world a better place. And it's strange, living all this a second time, reliving it all from the shadows. I recognized a vagrant the other day. I know how he dies weeks from now. I can save him from that fate. A simple start. If I can do that much, then I can save us all. I still see visions of it. Every day, haunting me. Time, frozen. Billions of people just stopped for an eternity. Never living and never dead. She followed me here. Tried to kill me. I'd like to think it haunts her too. Okay, now the fifth diary entry from 2016 again. It was him the whole time. Martin fucking Hatch has been sabotaging me from the inside. He destroyed the lab containing my only treatments. I can feel my sickness spreading by the minute. Without those treatments, it's only a matter of time until... He's had his hands in every phase of Monarch's development, overseen our R&D division for years. Why? Why now? This can't be about control. He wants control of Monarch. He is using this company for his own agenda, building towards something. All those secret projects I granted him. What has he been up to? We will find him, and I will put an end to this once and for all. Yes, Martin Hatch has its own agenda. Okay, the six. Uh, diary entry about control. It's only a matter of time before the sickness takes over. I have delayed the inevitable, taken the final treatment to reach the clarity necessary for my final actions. All I've built, everything I've done here, it can't be for nothing. The lifeboat cannot function without the CFR, the countermeasure. I have had a vision. I've seen Jack at the swimming pool holding the device. That's where I'm meant to stop him. That's where I must go. That's where this ends. Uh, uh, I ordered Liam Burke to guard the CFR chamber. I know he won't succeed, but at the very least he'll slow Jack down, make sure he comes out hurting. Now I have to finish the job. Know that everything I have done was necessary to sh assure our survival. Every life lost was in the service of our future. My fight ends today, but Monarchs has just begun. The end of time cannot be prevented, but it can be endured. We will survive. We will survive. Nice final words. Yeah, it won't be the final words because two more entries are left. And uh, yeah, in the next episode we will continue with the story in order to unlock these last final diary entries, which we will also read in the, or not read, but listen to in the course of the further story. But uh, yeah, it's time for a break now. Thanks a lot for watching guys and see you in the next episode. 
tomorrow. Bye bye, have a good time.